Events and you've always got new stuff, right? <laughs> no, absolutely. I just can't help it. As you tell, uh, I didn't go away for me summer holidays this year, Nick. Um, been quite busy. Um, two brand new uh, modules that, that we've got here. Um, we have first of all our uh, our fixed filter bank uh, 914, which for fixed filter bank fans out there, they'll probably recognise those numbers. Um, it's uh, it's an inductor based uh, 12 bandpass uh, filters uh, spaced at half octave intervals from 125 hertz uh, through to uh, 5.8 kilohertz and then we also have uh, high and low pass uh, shelving filters on that now that's where the similarities stop really uh, because from there we've added quite a few features to it uh, we split it into uh, we split it into two channels so we still have an all-out um, output here, which is the output from all 12 bandpass plus the high and low filters. But we have, we have this, uh, we have left and right out. So if we have a look at this, the um, the in the in the box, you'll see that the, there's low pass, and then there's 175 hertz, etc. They're, they're rooted to the to the left-hand channel. So basically, the odd, all of the odd bands. So so you use like a not a crossroad crossover, but like a comb. Yes. So what? So what we've done is we've split it. We split it across into two, into two, um, uh, two six, um, six stage filter banks, and we can cross fade between them. So uh, for those people who perhaps don't know, I mean, most people know what a filter is, right? Yeah. Filter what bank, is a fixed filter bank? What's a fixed filter bank? What right. sort of things do you get? I mean, you get kind of interesting sort of. Time. Yeah. Well, the, the first thing is obviously the the frequency of the filters are fixed. The uh, People, I mean, the, a lot of people think, oh, well, all it is, it's a graphic equaliser. Well, it isn't. I mean, it's, um, we, have, we have a similar kind of thing where we have fixed frequencies that we can, we can uh, move up and down. But in the case of a fixed filter bank, if we set all of the controls to halfway, uh, we won't get a, we won't get a flat half, frequency yeah. response. We'll get a comb response with 12 combs. Which kind of gets a bit formanty, doesn't it? It's got a kind it of. It can, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and by uh, obviously by setting by setting different levels to that, you can um, you, you can color you can color and change the sound considerably, and not just for um, not just for, uh, for for regular synth sounds, also for percussion. I mean, you can really make percussion come alive with one it's of It's one of the real building blocks, Nick, because Buchler's got a similar sort of thing, hasn't That's it? That's right. And, and it's very That's useful right. for making yeah. kind of really atmospheric. And also uh, resonant noise. Sound. Yeah, and Serge as well. Uh, Serge had the, um, the the filter bank. Um, the Serge, the uh, the difference with the inductor with the inductor based one. Um, this is actually a second order filter, uh, which means that it's uh, the each of the individual fixed filters are, are very much peakier. Uh, you, so uh, fixed higher Q, Q, right? yeah. yeah, a lot higher Q. Uh, than something like the Serge, uh, which uh, which I think only it was only first order filters. And is there any CV control of any of the parameters? Well, what we have, we can't we can't control the CV of any of the filters, which it wouldn't be a fixed filter bank if we I did that, would it? Right. No. Um, but what we can do, as I say, we have um, we have independent left and right channels, and um, we have a crossfader on there, so we have a mix output, and the crossfader that we have. Uh, we can fade. Um, it's 12 o'clock. Uh, that's given us all 12. All ah, right, so you can flip between. It's going yeah. to be two. Yeah. So uh, let's put some audio. Um, let's just get some audio from it. So we got some white noise. Let's have a listen to to what we have. Um, first, we've just got some plain old white noise going in there. Um, And then if we just what we've got there is that's going through all twelve of the um, that's going through all twelve of, of the bandpass filters, so if we wind all these up. Then and it's got a kind of quite slight there's a blade uh, not blade runner, um, a razor head. Yeah. It reminds me of razor, but there was all that sort of um, 
resonant pipe noise everywhere, wasn't yes. there? That's yeah. So that you can see there's there's the dry signal that's going in. The wet signal there, there's the mix of all twelve of the um, of the fixed filters. But we what we're doing there is we cross the we cross the between the two banks of six. Now we can do that manually as I'm doing there, or we also oh, we have a mix CD, yeah. yeah, and we have a separate um, level control for that, um, in which case the other one works as an offset. So you use it with a. Uh, okay, maybe we can drop that down. It's quite uh, it's quite hard to hear anything else with the. Well, thank uh, you very much. There we go. Yeah. So we have that, and then the other uh, the other thing that that we have on it is we have the uh, the wet dry fader. I mean, you right, so normally you can see have a, mod, yeah. Normally you'd have a bypass. If we put a bypass on this, there's always uh, the input, the output levels determined by the setting of these. Yeah. So we'd have a huge disparity of levels. So what we can do here by uh, by having a wet dry, we have we can control the uh, the dry level. But the other thing we have is a second input, so we can put a source into that, and instead of it being a wet dry mix, it becomes it cross fades cross fades ah. between the external signal and the output of the filter bank. Oh, right, cool. And then the other feature it has it has a feedback control as well, um, so that that's like a resonance control, but obviously it has a different effect because it's working on fixed filters rather than a sweeping filter. Um, so we have a, we have we have that uh, feedback, and we have. Uh, so voltage control we have over the left right mix uh, that we've looked at earlier and also between the wet dry or external and wet. Right. Yep. So um, is this is this imminent? When's it coming? Uh, it's in Eurorack terms it's imminent, which uh, um, yeah, six, what sort of different time scale? Modular <laughs> yes, time. Uh, modular time, yeah. Uh, six to eight weeks we think. Um, and price wise, price point it's gonna be uh, four hundred and sixty five pounds. Okay. Um, and available from uh, all good AGH stockists uh, near you. So coming to the um, the other the other new module that we've launched is the sample holding slew, and this is um, effectively four modules in one. Uh, we have first of all a noise source, which it's an analog noise. Um, with with that, we have two two variants on it. We have the regular noise, and we also have clipped noise, which um, which is weighted more heavily to uh, to higher and lower voltages. Which is quite useful with the uh, with the sample and hold unit. So that's first of all the clip noise, and then we also have a noise colour control, which uh, very similar to the uh, uh, to the AMS synth uh, VCS3. Um, so is it pink and white, or does it get to blue um, and brown and uh, all well, other colours? Well, nah, it's it's uh, blue and pink. Blue and blue pink. And it's boys and girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the so that's the noise colour control. So the, the noise section is um, is normalised to the uh, to the sample and hold unit. Right. We can we can also we can take the noise as an external output as well, and likewise with the sample and hold unit, it's the noise is normal to it, but obviously we can put a different signal into the the input of the sample and hold as well. The for the clock of the sample and hold, one of the um, the other things on the module it has a um, it has a wide range clock oscillator that's built in. Which goes from uh, 30 seconds per cycle through to uh, through to about two kilohertz. Oh, okay. And then um, again, the clock signal um, we we can take that as an external output as well. So that's clocking the uh, that's clocking the sample and hold. On the sample and hold unit itself, uh, we can switch between sample and hold and track and hold modes. And one of the other features that we have is this restrict control, which that restricts the excursion between samples so what happens it will say that you will say that you're sampling uh, white noise which is between plus and minus five volts well let's say the first sample comes in at plus five volts and your second sample comes in at minus five normally with the sample and hold the output would be plus five volts and then it would drop down to minus five on the on the next sample the way that this works is you, the restrict control limits the excursion so in that case it would drop down to let's say four and a half volts positive from five and then on the next excursion if that was more negative it would drop down by the same small amount right but it isn't an attenuator it's like a limiter almost yeah yeah it's nearer to a limiter than uh, than an attenuator but it's quite useful when you um when you use it because it it can limit it, it can keep the, the sample and hold range more musical instead of you know yeah. being well, up in the quite heavens often, and, quite often yeah. you have to adjust the depth just to be able to hear that's it, it. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's it. That's yeah yeah so we have the uh, the restrict control on it 
and then moving across to the um, the slew section. Again, the slew the slew generator is normalised uh, to the um, to the output of the sampler hold. So output of the sample hold is going to the uh, to the slew in. And so you can uh, round the corners off and yeah, that, sample that's and glide it, yeah. and all that stuff. With the slew, um, two different types of slew. We can have linear slew or exponential slew, and then also we can it, we can have a sort of slew up only or a slew down only. And the, so it's quite quite uh, quite intensely specialist. Yes, <laughs> and, the, and the other thing with the with the slew is it's a gated slew as well, so that we can use an external gate to determine whether the slew is on or off. Ah, okay. And um, and also we have a gate polarity on that as well. So that you can decide whether you use a gate high to switch the slew on, or a gate low to switch the uh, slew effect on. Which sonically would have quite a big difference if you just well, played that. Yeah, and also that that doubles up as a as a manual slew on off uh, switch for the module as well. Yeah, so there we go. That's the uh, sampling hold and slew module. And is that are these based on kind of? I mean, obviously, the fixed filter bank has got roots in uh, early electronic music modules. But the, the, is the because it's part of the mini mod uh, range? I mean, is it still yeah. kind of based in that sort of world? Or no, um, not really. The I mean, sampling hold goes back to the birth of modular, really. And um, sampling hold has been you know, has been in the electronics world for a long time. Uh, this particular unit, the um, I was racking my brains to come up with something that was you know um, another take on sampling hold. Tried a lot of things. And um, and I was talking to Tony Allgood from um, from Oakley Sound, and um, and he just said, well, why not use mine? It has a restrict function and everything else. So the actual slew, uh, sorry, the sample and hold uh, part of that module is actually uh, Tony Allgood's design, and it's built under license from Oakley Sound. Right. Okay. Um, the rest of it's off my off my own design, um, but it's. Um, but I, all, all of it goes back to the roots of modular, really, and early analog electronics. Yeah. So when, when, and how much for this guy? Uh, this one's two hundred and ten pounds. Uh, same, same time scale, six to eight weeks. Thank you very much.